Thanks for becoming a Can-Am side-by-side -side owner and welcome to the safety video. This is a short video filled with safety information. As a new Can-Am side-by-side -side user, you're going to enjoy this exciting vehicle that allows you to ride with one passenger beside you and depending on your vehicle, up to two more at the rear. Watch this video before using your Can-Am side-by-side. Failure to do so may result in serious injury or death. In addition to watching this video, take the time to read and follow your operator's guide. It should be kept with your vehicle at all times. Moreover, you must also read and understand all safety labels affixed to your vehicle before riding. That way, you keep the important safety tips in mind. Riding on side-by-side -side vehicles poses certain risks like any other type of vehicle. That's why it's very important to have the skills and knowledge to be totally in control of your vehicle at all times. It's also critical to understand your vehicle's operating characteristics and limitations. One characteristic of your Can-Am side-by-side is that it's wider than most ATVs. If you are an ATV rider, you need to be especially aware of that extra width at all times. Respect local laws and regulations before riding in public areas. Your next step is to practice in a controlled, low-risk environment in order to become familiar with your vehicle's behavior by doing the practice exercises shown in the guide. We'll go over this in more detail later in this video. More formal training is also a good idea. We recommend that you enroll in a class to hone your knowledge and skills even more. The Can-Am side-by-side -side is a different type of off-road vehicle. Its configuration makes it much different from an all-terrain vehicle. In this section, we'll show you the distinctive features and operating characteristics of this vehicle. This vehicle handles differently from other vehicles. A rollover or tip-over can occur quickly during abrupt maneuvers such as sharp turns or simply by side-hilling or riding across steep hills or over obstacles. So don't assume that the vehicle will not tip or roll over. You must know the limits of your vehicle under different riding conditions. Do not attempt maneuvers that may be risky for you, your passengers, or bystanders. Use care when turning and slow down before entering a turn. Do not turn the steering wheel too far or too fast for your speed and environment. Avoid sudden or hard acceleration when turning, even from a stop or low speed. Never perform donuts, skids, slides, fishtails, jumps, or any other stunts. Avoid paved surfaces. This vehicle is built for off-road purposes only. If you must drive on pavement, turn gradually and go slowly. The best place to ride your Can-Am side-by-side is on loose, soft, packed, unpaved surfaces. Riding on paved surfaces may seriously affect handling and control of the vehicle and may cause a sudden loss of control. On low grip surfaces like snow, the steering responses are not as crisp and precise. Stopping distances are lengthened and acceleration becomes sluggish. The Can-Am side-by-side -side has two or four seats, depending on your model. Each seating place has a restraint system, which includes a seat belt, lateral net, shoulder guard, and hand grips to help the user stay inside the cockpit. It is of utmost importance that all occupants always buckle up their seat belt and lateral net before riding. Furthermore, they should always keep their entire body inside the cockpit. The operator should hold the steering wheel firmly with both hands, place his left foot on the footrest, and sit against the backrest. The passengers should hold the hand grips firmly with both hands, place their feet on the floor or footrest, and sit against the backrest. Riding an open-air vehicle like your Can-Am side-by-side -side requires wearing proper protective gear. Recommended basic protective gear for all riders includes a jacket that protects you from sunburn, cold temperatures, branches, and bushes. 
A sturdy, over-the-ankle footwear with non-slip soles, full-fingered gloves that protect you against the wind, sun, cold, heat, and flying objects. And above all, an approved helmet with proper eye protection that protects your head and brain against injury and protects your eyes against flying elements. On long rides, it's a good idea to carry rain gear. A dry rider will be much more comfortable and alert than a rider who is wet and cold. The operator must keep his arms, legs, and head inside the cockpit at all times by fastening the seatbelt and lateral net, by holding the steering wheel firmly, and by placing his left foot on the footrest. The passengers must keep arms, legs, and head inside the cockpit at all times by fastening the seatbelt and lateral net, by holding the hand grips firmly, and by placing their feet on the floor. If the vehicle rolls over, any part of your body outside the cockpit can be crushed by the cage or other parts of the vehicle. Never try to stop a rollover by using your arm or leg. Never grab the cage while riding. If you think or feel the vehicle may tip or roll, keep both hands on the steering wheel or hand grips and brace yourself. Riding in side-by-side -side vehicles poses certain risks like any other type of vehicle. That's why it's very important to have the skills and knowledge to be totally in control of your vehicle at all times. It's also critical to understand your vehicle operating characteristics and limitations. Finally, every time you go out for a ride, you accept inherent risks such as those arising from terrain conditions and weather. But you can reduce your exposure to these risks by using good judgment, skills, and vigilance while operating your vehicle. You must be at least 16 years old with a valid driver's license to drive this vehicle and avoid anything that impairs your own abilities, such as alcohol, drugs, and fatigue. It's equally important that your passengers are able to hold the hand grips and place their feet on the floor while seated against the backrest. They must not ride after consuming drugs or alcohol. Another key way to reduce your exposure to risk is to carefully plan and prepare. By thinking ahead, you can often avoid situations that may be beyond your skill level. Preparing to ride your vehicle means that you perform regular maintenance to keep it in good working condition and inspect it before every ride as outlined in your operator's guide. Let's take a look at the controls found on your Can-Am side-by-side. -side. 1. Steering wheel. Use both hands on the wheel, but take care not to roll your thumbs around it. To steer your vehicle, simply turn in the direction you want to go. Two, Accelerator pedal. This pedal is located on the floor on the right side. To control engine speed, use your right foot to activate the pedal. To increase engine speed, slowly press on the pedal. To decrease it, release the pedal. A spring mechanism returns the pedal to the idle position when you completely release your foot. 3. Brake pedal. When it comes to stopping, your Can-Am side-by-side -side braking system functions similarly to that of a car. The brake pedal is located on the floor on the left side. To decrease the vehicle speed or to stop the vehicle using the brake, simply press on the pedal with your right foot. Be careful to gradually apply the brake to adjust to the intensity of the braking force needed depending on the terrain conditions. Avoid locking the wheels to maintain directional control. 4. Shift Lever Your right hand maneuvers the shift lever located on the lower console. The shift lever is used to change the gearbox position. Make sure the vehicle is completely stopped and that the brake is applied before using the shift lever. Your vehicle's gear pattern is P, R, N, H, and L. The P is for Park. The Park position locks the gearbox to help prevent vehicle movement. 
always use the park position when the vehicle is not in operation. Before dismounting from the vehicle, always put the shift lever to park. The vehicle can roll if it is not in park. The R is for reverse. Your Can-Am side-by-side is equipped with a reverse gear so you can back up easily, but backing up your vehicle should be done with some caution. Always be sure that the way behind is clear and always apply the throttle gradually. Be careful not to steer abruptly when backing up as it could lead to a loss of vehicle control or rollover. Refer to the reverse section of your operator's guide for detailed instructions on how to operate in reverse mode. The N is for neutral. The H is for the high range in the forward direction. This setting is the normal driving speed range. The L is for the low range in the forward direction. We recommend using this gear when carrying a trailer or when fully loaded when you need all the torque at low speed. 5. Ignition Switch The ignition switch is located on the upper console and has three positions. When you insert your key, it is in position number 1, off. When you turn your key one position to the right, the electrical system and lights are on and you're ready to start the engine. This is position number two, on with lights. One more step to the right and the switch is at position number three. This position is similar to the previous one, except that the lights stay off. When you want to stop the engine, you have to turn the ignition switch to the off position. Speaking of keys, your vehicle comes with two different ignition keys. The regular gray key limits the top speed, power and torque of your vehicle. This may be useful for riders who prefer less performance. We recommend giving this key to a less experienced operator who wants to drive the vehicle. The performance black key gives full access to engine performance. There is also an orange work key available at your dealership. This key gives the limited performance often required on some construction sites. Rollovers, tipovers, collisions, and loss of control resulting in serious injury or death are possible no matter which key you're using. Number 6. Engine Start Button The engine start button is next to the ignition switch to the right. Simply press and hold the button to start the engine. Once the engine has started, release the button. Number 7. Sport Switch The sport switch located on the right side of the upper console has an effect on engine mapping for crisper throttle response when sport mode is selected. 8. High and Low Beam Switch The high and low beam switch is located on the left side of the upper console. You should have the ignition switch to the second position before setting the intensity of the light. 9. Two-wheel or four-wheel drive switch. This switch is located next to the previous switch on the upper console. When you need to use this switch, don't forget to stop the vehicle and apply the brake first. The two rear wheels are engaged when two-wheel drive mode is selected. 10. Override switch. This switch is located beside the shift lever on the lower console. The function of the override switch is to bypass the engine speed limiter while in reverse. Perform a pre-ride inspection before each ride to detect any potential problems that could occur during operation. The pre-ride inspection can help you monitor component wear and deterioration before they become a problem. Your pre-ride inspection should be as much a part of your preparation routine as checking the weather forecast before heading out for the day. Correct any problems that you discover. See an authorized Can-Am dealer if necessary. Start your inspection by walking around your vehicle. We suggest that you start with the tires by looking at tire condition. Next, check the tire pressure using the pressure gauge provided with your vehicle. Refer to the safety label to find out what is recommended pressure for the load you wish to carry. Never set the pressure below the minimum. Underinflated tires can dislodge from the rim. After dealing with the tires, do a quick visual check for damage to the wheels and lug nuts. 
You should twist each lug nut by hand to be sure nothing is loose. Next, look underneath your vehicle and check for any signs of fluids on the ground, which would indicate your vehicle has a leak somewhere. Check the front grill kit for cleanliness and remove debris. Check drive shaft boots and protector condition. Check that cargo is properly loaded and secured in all storage compartments of your vehicle. Make sure that you do not exceed the maximum cargo weight of any of the compartments and that overall weight is within the limits of your vehicle. Then make sure that the upper and lower tailgates are adequately latched and that the cargo bed is secured. If you're hauling a trailer, you must also verify that it is securely attached to your vehicle and that the tongue weight is not over the limit. Check if seats are properly latched. Now, insert your ignition key and turn to the position number two so the lights come on. Check that the multifunction gauges cluster is powered and self-testing. Now, walk around your vehicle by checking the functionality and cleanliness of the headlights, taillights, and reflectors. Go back to your controls and press on the high-low beam switch and check that the headlights are still working properly. Now check the seat belts and lateral nets condition and verify buckle operation. Now it's time to put on your helmet and the rest of your riding gear. Next, press on the accelerator pedal a few times to ensure it operates freely and returns to the rest position when released. If it does not, do not start your engine. Take the vehicle in to have it repaired. If the accelerator pedal is working properly, press down on the brake pedal and make sure you feel firm resistance and that it fully returns to position when released. Now, press the start button to start the engine and check the fuel level and see if any special messages appear in the cluster. Turn the engine switch to off to verify if the engine will shut down. Restart the engine. Verify that your steering operates freely by turning the steering wheel in both directions several times. Now, drive forward a small distance slowly to verify that everything is moving freely and normally. Then apply your brake to test for proper stopping. You're almost ready to go on your ride. Before you go out for your first ride, it's very important to familiarize yourself with the handling of your vehicle by practicing in a controlled setting. You can do the exercises as described in your operator's guide. If possible, it's also a very good idea to take a more formal training course to sharpen your skills and increase your knowledge. We will briefly review the recommended exercises. First, you need to find a suitable area to practice and perform the following exercises. It should be at least 150 feet by 150 feet or about 45 meters by 45 meters. An area without obstacles like trees and rocks. Once you've selected a suitable location, it is important to gain permission from the owner for you to practice. We will rapidly review together the main exercises you should perform. Turning is one of the most frequent causes of accidents. It's easier for the vehicle to lose traction or roll over if you turn too sharply or are going too fast. Slow down when you approach a turn. First, learn how to perform slight right turns at very low speeds. Release the throttle before starting to turn and slowly reapply the throttle when turning. Then do the same, but this time maintain the throttle at the same position while turning. Finally, do it again while accelerating slowly. Note how your vehicle reacts in these different exercises. We recommend releasing the throttle before entering into a turn to help initiate directional change. You will feel the lateral force increasing with the speed and with your steering input. The lateral force should be maintained as low as possible to make sure it does not cause the vehicle to roll over. Practice doing U-turns. Start to move slowly, then gradually turn the steering wheel to the right until you have completed the U-turn. Repeat with different steering input 
and always at a very low speed. As mentioned before, do not ride on paved surfaces because the vehicle behavior will not be the same, increasing the risk of rollover. The next step is important because you need to get used to using the brake. Pressing on the brake firmly while your vehicle is running will help you to feel the braking force of your vehicle. Do it at low speed first and then increase the speed. The last step involves using the reverse gear. Learn how the vehicle handles in reverse and reacts with steering input. Always perform this exercise at slow speeds. Now that you can start your vehicle, you should learn how to stop your engine quickly in an emergency. While running at low speed, simply turn off the ignition switch. This is to familiarize you with the vehicle's reaction when the engine is turned off while driving. Crossing obstacles like logs, rocks and ruts is risky and should be avoided as much as possible. Your vehicle will respond differently to different obstacles, so be extra careful in these situations. Keep your speed slow. Approach the obstacles and apply a little throttle when the tires touch the obstacle and release the throttle when the front tires clear the obstacle. If only one tire comes into contact with the obstacle, don't apply the throttle. Let the momentum of the vehicle carry you over the obstacle. Never cross water deeper than the bottom of the vehicle floor. Engine damage and injury can result from crossing deeper water. Also, the tires are very buoyant and can cause the vehicle to float. This is especially dangerous in fast-moving currents. Before crossing any body of water, find out how deep the water is by stopping the vehicle and physically checking the water depth. Try to avoid steep inclines. If you're not careful, you could overturn when you're going up or down hills. When climbing hills, you should drive straight uphill using a steady speed. Avoid acceleration to minimize the risk of tipping over. If the slope is getting too big, stop and go down the hill in reverse while using the brake gradually. Never coast downhill with the vehicle in neutral. Side hilling your vehicle is one of the most dangerous types of riding and should be avoided if possible. If you cannot avoid riding on the side of the hill, slow down and do not perform abrupt maneuvers. The Can-Am side-by-side -side is designed to carry the operator with one or up to three passengers, depending on your vehicle model. Don't carry passengers until you have experience riding alone in a variety of conditions and can proficiently handle your vehicle. Never carry a passenger if you judge his ability or judgment insufficient to concentrate on the terrain conditions and to brace accordingly. Refer to the safety label to find the total cargo weight limit of your vehicle. This includes the weight of the occupants, any cargo, tongue weight, and accessories. Heavier riders need to be particularly aware of the weight limit. Never ride with more occupants than the vehicle was designed for, even if the total weight would be under the vehicle's cargo weight limit. Every passenger should be tall enough to be properly seated back against the backrest, with seatbelt fastened while holding both handholds and have firmly planted feet on the floor or on the footrest. They must not ride after consuming drugs or alcohol. Be sure the passengers are properly dressed. The passengers should wear all of the protective gear recommended for the operator, especially a helmet. Before starting, make sure all occupants of the vehicle buckle their lateral net and seat belt, grab hand grips, and keep their feet on the floor or footrest at all times. Watch the road, brace for bumps, and always keep their arms, legs, and head inside the cockpit. Do not exceed the weight limits for riders and cargo. Overloading will make accelerating, braking, and turning more difficult. Always reduce your speed when carrying cargo. 
You won't be able to stop as quickly with the maximum weight on board as you could without this weight. Overloading will potentially increase the risk of rolling over if the weight is high or toward the rear. Always secure the cargo in the center as low as possible and towards the front of the cargo box. Never carry passengers in the cargo area or on the upper or lower tailgates. Latch the cargo box and tailgates before riding. Hauling a trailer affects the way the vehicle handles because of the greater weight and because the weight distribution is different. Set the low range gear using the shift lever. Reduce your speed and slow down more than usual before turning. Also, avoid sharp turns. There is a greater risk of tipping or rolling during extreme maneuvers. Avoid riding on hills and rough terrain. Allow more distance to stop. Before hauling a trailer, it's important to perform the pre-ride inspection of your trailer. Make sure the cargo is safely secured and properly distributed in the trailer before operating the vehicle. Improper loading of a trailer may cause loss of control. Always secure cargo as low as possible in the trailer to reduce the effect of a high center of gravity. Don't carry too much cargo, even if the storage volume is big. Always refer to the safety labels on the trailer and the hitch to find out what the maximum cargo and tongue weight are. Too much weight at the tongue reduces steering control. Too little weight at the tongue can render the trailer unstable. Always use safety chains or cables when towing a trailer. Ensure they are secured to the trailer and to the hitch and that they cross under the tongue. This concludes our review of the important safety information that you need to know before enjoying your Can-Am side-by-side. -side. Thank you for your time and enjoy the ride.